use a small six inch sample and you're just using constant uh, E, A over L. We manipulated that and found the K for our budgies to be a slope over the length of the sample divided by the length that is actually on the launcher and how many wraps you have and the number of bunnies. So here to the right, this is our initial tubing. It was three eighths inch in diameter. It behaved exactly as you would expect from uh, latex tubing. So it was a little difficult to find the constant. Uh, so a couple weeks later, we got a new batch of tubing in. And when we tested the Instrom, we were surprised how it uh, acted. So we were able to find the gain constant of that. And it's about 63 pounds per foot. Can pull back. So uh, with any projectile motion, and it has its own uh, coefficient of drag and its drag force. So we decided to take a pumpkin and put it in the wind tunnel. Uh, in the front there, we have eight holes drilled. Uh, we replicated the last fluids experiment that we did last year. Uh, so we took eight surface pressure readings and measured the pressure distribution across them. We put, uh, did speeds of 30, 40, and 50 miles an hour using 30 as our control. Uh, we found the Reynolds number at 30 miles an hour to be 6.52 times 10 to the fourth. Uh, using our fluids knowledge, we know that around that is laminar. Um, and then with the help of uh, Dr. Colleen and the fluids lab again, we found the drag coefficient of our pumpkin to be 0 0.36. Uh, we chose to neglect this, and along with the Magnus force, because it's so negligible in uh, the actual force calculations. All right, and now I have a few videos to show you. This was our longest launch. You can see the cursor show Yeah. OK, so the pumpkin's actually right here. It's right after it started launching, and I'll show you the video. And so that's the end of launch, and that is the back. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
any uh, simulation data on your control system? Um, like any impulse response, anything like that for your... No, I didn't, I didn't do any, any sort of thing like that. I, the, the thing I, what I was worrying about with the control system was in, I wasn't worried too much about anything, any sort of um, big complicated thing. I just simply wanted to have a motor move a wheel which move, which do, which moves the indicator up and down the tracks here. And so, and then using the gear ratio to just change the tangenometer so the system would know when to stop. Okay, um, I guess uh, one other question then really quickly. Uh, did you um, consider using an optical encoder instead of a potentiometer for your uh, gear? Because apparently that seems to be the... Uh, I just want to point out that we were a team of five mechanicals. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is our next step would be explore yeah. options like that because we just were trying to get the gear train in and the jumper wasn't working and at that point we said we want launches, we need something repeatable so we have data. That would be a good next step for future work, but we never were able to research more on that. What were the constraints on your system? I mean uh, mostly the uh, elevator, unfortunately. We needed to get it up from the basement, so we had a huge size constraint with the fact that we couldn't, I mean, that's the reason we have a whole separate system. We couldn't fit the entirety of the system into an elevator. We had to break it up so we would have a bigger pullback. And then we were trying to uh, model the projector competitions to have uh, projectiles that are four to six pounds. So that was a, another constraint that we were dealing with. Me first? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure you did uh, your experiment in uh, physics lab about the projectile motion, uh, where you also had measurement on range and things like that. Now you are doing something similar here, but you also mentioned you have a drag uh, coefficient. How did you implement in the parabolic motion uh, the drag coefficient, and can you extend that to launch a ballistic? As far as launching ballistic uh, missiles, that, that's a work in progress. If they're four to six pounds, we can try. Yeah. <laughs> what was the uh, most difficult, each one of you has answered, what was the most difficult part of this project? How do you want to start it? Okay. Right. Well, first, obviously, you drag the fish on the pumpkin. We didn't know if it was possible to put it in the tunnel just in case something would go wrong and obviously it could suck in. So that was definitely the hardest analysis. I, for me, the hardest part would probably have been dealing with the Arduino serial monitor because I was going to be using that to input the um, required, required variables from the user. And I discovered that the Arduino serial monitor does not deal with, does not print and take inputs like other programs do. I was having a problem where I would have, I would want it to print out uh, the, a message saying input to this message, and then it just got confused with itself because now there's an input and it didn't know what to do and started just spitting random stuff out at me. Did you, so did you, did you look at the did you look at the, the uh, termination character of the string? I try, I tried looking all over Arduino's website, this and that, and no. And everything I was finding was like for a single variable that you keep in putting out the multiple variables like I needed, which is why I ended up switching to Python. I would say 3D modeling the, uh, the buttons and then there. Uh, I would say getting the times when all five of us could be there together to the launch was the most difficult time part for me personally because we had a certain block of time on Thursdays that all was mostly free, but occasionally there was work, occasionally there was projects and homework and whatnot. It was, it was tough to get everyone together, so we just kind of had to improvise on the fly. So the, the bungee, finding the k-values of the boat, but honestly, the construction, I know it looks easy, but getting everything perfectly symmetric, um, you have bending, you have torsion, they move, they slide, 